Hello, welcome to the 100 Q&A practice. We're going to start off with defense questioning. Ready? You allege in paragraph six of your deposition that the gas lines are maintained under the direct supervision and control of the Minnesota Department of Power. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Are these instructions for supervision and control in writing? Yes, they are. Do you remember the gentleman's name who came down and visited your facility to inspect the gas line? Yes, Mr. Paul Davidson. Upon inspection, did Mr. Davidson note any irregularities in the installation of these gas lines? No, he did not. Were you aware of any irregularities in these gas lines? No, I was not. Please tell the court and jury, as best you can recall, what other inspections took place. None. Oh, yes, just one. In other words, no one came to inspect the lines except the Minnesota Department of Power? That is correct. Did an inspector visit your facility from the United States Department of Resources? No. Did an inspector visit your facility from the Minneapolis Department of Energy? No. Did an inspector from the United States Bureau of Mines visit your facility? Yes, he did. Okay, what is his name? Matthew Harper. Did Mr. Harper suggest to you orally or in written form that there might be an underground fault at or near the placement of these gas lines? No, he did not. What was the date of Mr. Davidson's inspection? I believe, if I may refer to my notes, November 11, 2012. What was the date of Mr. Harper's visit to your facility? December 3, 2012. What was the date that your plant commenced operations at this facility? December 4, 2012. Isn't it true that you began production on November 25? No, we began receiving shipments of materials throughout November, but we did not start production until December 4. When is the first time you noticed any problems with gas leakage? On December 17, 2012. Did you call for a repairman from the Minnesota Department of Power? Yes, I did. Was he able to fix the problem? Yes, he appeared to eliminate the leakage. Please tell us what happened on January 22, 2013. I received a phone call on my cell from a line supervisor that there was a gas line that had burst near the rear exit door to the plant. What did you do? I ordered the line supervisor to begin evacuating the building. Did you call the power department? Yes, I did call the emergency service. Did you call anyone else? No, I didn't know how serious the problem was. What happened next? I alerted several of my staff and went to the front of the building in danger to wait for the repairmen. 
at 3.42 p.m., did an explosion occur in the rear of the plant? Yes, it did. Was anyone in the building at that time? Fortunately for us, no one was in the facility at that time. How many minutes would you say had elapsed since the phone call from the line supervisor to your arrival at the front of the building between three and four minutes? What was the estimate of the amount of damage as submitted to the St. Paul, Minneapolis Insurance Company? Approximately $257,000. Was anyone injured in this unfortunate occurrence? No. Okay, switching to a different transcript. I have allergies today, so excuse, excuse that. <laughs> this is going to be plaintiff. Ready? Where did you search next? I went next to the kitchen. Was anything found in the kitchen? Yes, I located several baby food jars full of a clear substance, which I thought was PCP. After being analyzed, however, it turned out to be embalming fluid. Where did you, in the refrigerator, make sure you let him finish before you give an answer? Okay, now embalming fluid is what they use to preserve a dead body, correct? That's correct. And people use embalming fluid as a drug? Yes. How would one ingest embalming fluid? The preferred method of ingestion is to smoke a cigarette or joint that has been dipped in it. And what are the effects of smoking a cigarette or joint dipped in embalming fluid? Objection, Your Honor. Irrelevant. Sustained. Next question. Did you find any dipped cigarettes or joints? No. Is embalming fluid, is it legal to possess embalming fluid? Only if you're a licensed mortician. Okay. Did you find anything else in the kitchen? Yes. I located $15,000 in a box of cereal. I also located another $5,500 in a large can of coffee. Were any weapons found in the kitchen? No. Do people who sell drugs usually hide them in places like cereal boxes and cans of coffee? Objection. That question is argumentative. Sustained. Your Honor, he has been... Sustained. Next question, counsel. Officer, what were the denominations of the currency? Both the $15,000 and the $5,500 were in $100 bill increments. Was anything else found in the kitchen? No. Where did you proceed to next? I next went to the front bathroom. Was anything found in the front bathroom? I located a Smith & Wesson 38 caliber snubbed nose revolver in a cabinet drawer next to the sink. Was that gun loaded? Yes, it was. There was also additional ammunition in a speed loader in the same drawer. What is a speed loader? It's a device that allows someone 
to load a revolver with all six bullets at once instead of having to place each bullet in one at a time. Anything else? No, sir. Where did you next go? I next went into the bedroom, which is located next to the front bathroom. How many bedrooms did this particular house have? Two. So this would be the front bedroom? Yes. And there was, I assume, a master bedroom somewhere else? Yes, down a hall, small hall, is where the master bedroom and bathroom were. Okay, that concludes our Q&A practice for the 100 class. Thank you.